morning internet, Lizard here with the video on galaxy building. I will show you how to get from this first clunky drawing of a galaxy to this elegant model. I'll explain it, I'll walk you through the process, and I'll let you know a few fun tips and tricks. Also if you look in the description there's a cool guide. So science class has taught us that there were three main types of galaxies, elliptical, spiral, and irregular. For the sake of sci-fi role-playing, we're going to model all galaxies like a cylinder and then adjust the star count. Our dear, dear Milky Way is a spiral galaxy containing between 100 and 400 billion stars. It is 100,000 light years wide and 1,000 light years thick. So all we really need to do is take a cylinder, model it a thousand light years high by a hundred thousand light years thick, and then put between one and four hundred billion stars in it. This will tell us how close each star is to one another, which will determine time and resource cost for interstellar travel. Calculate the area of the Milky Way. We take formulas for cylinder, so we plug in the radius squared, so a hundred thousand divided by two, so fifty thousand times fifty thousand that times pi times the height. Damn. So it looks like our galaxy is about 7.8 trillion square light years. And so we take this massive number and we divide it by the number of stars. So say we take the middle estimate, which would be 200 billion, about 39.25 light years between each star. Unfortunately, this isn't as accurate as I would like because this is the average distance between stars in the Milky Way, so we can tweak our formula a little bit by taking the same volume and dividing it by 400 billion. If you're going to have a game that has faster than light travel, I would say that this is what you should use. Otherwise, use what I had as a springboard and make it better. Again, it's not about mirroring it perfectly, it's about simulating what we need to. Now with between 1 and 400 billion stars dispersed across hundreds of thousands of millions of light years, we need some way to arrange them so they're not all just sitting in the void uniformly. One, are they close enough to be ripping each other apart? And two, which stars are far enough away from the galactic core to be in areas that would be habitable? Now this idea is surprisingly controversial in the field of astronomy, but my solution to that is this chart. What I've done is I've had this circle represent a galaxy, and I've organized it into 10 different numbered zones. All these zones do is increase gravity. In your core, you're going to have the most gravity and the highest star density. Zone number 10, you're going to have the fewest amount of stars because you have the lowest star density. So zone 5 is your average number of stars. Now, you would take the number of light years in between each star, and in your average zone, that is the average distance between each star and light years. We'll say it's 19 light year distance at 400 billion stars in a galaxy approximately the size of the Milky Way. So, if we want to move inwards, we would divide by 2 for every single ring. So 19 divided by 2, that means between every star there are now 9.5 light years, and zone 4, zone 3, 4.75, zone 2, 2.3, Multiplying outwards. Stars on average on the edges of the galaxy. Is it perfect? No. Is it even remotely accurate? No. But it gives us a travel cost based on where we are relative to gravity being strongest. When we think about populating our galaxy, the first thing that comes to mind is the Drake Equation. Now, I've already made a video on this, so just check that out if you want me to break it down any further. It's quite a long Wikipedia article. To make a long story short, we don't really need it, because NASA was quoted saying there are at least 100 billion planets in the galaxy. So logically, we can just take our star count and multiply it by a number between 1 and 2 to get our planet count. This lets you keep things variable and create galaxies with varied characteristics. As far as the number of planets out of your total cohort that are habitable, though complicated, it looks like it's a value around, well, 
<clears throat> that's kind of hard to say because it depends on how much metal you have in your galaxy. If you want a galaxy with a lot of metal, you'll probably have planets that support more life due to their heavier gravity able to attract an atmosphere in more scenarios. So I'd say don't do anything crazy. Like, I think 10% is a good midpoint for planets that are capable of developing life, and then obviously less than that develop it intelligently, and so on and so forth. Again, reference the Drake equation. So if you've been paying attention, you'll realize that a lot of this is just taking random stuff from our singular example that we have, and making other random stuff out of it in order to write down random things for our random world. While it's not the most accurate, again, we're going to be able to simulate what we need to using this model, and I think that it's open to adjustment. As always, don't sell this, use it, tweak it, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, internet, have a nice day.